Welcome to the Mad Trio Podcast. This week we have the California Pariah, Jonathan Charney, we have James the Fat Man Stevens. Hello. And the only person I know who says VD is his friend, Ryan Preston. Everybody's my friend. That's a lie. So, uh, anybody want to go? I have a couple. I, I, I was going to jump in on one because I, I texted Brian a picture today. He probably doesn't really remember it, but... Um, I, I, I do remember it, and I, I remember looking at a couple of different things. I was going to text a few different things, but I was, like, right in the middle of work and explaining what the fuck I was looking at was going to take more time than I had. <laughs> so it was one of those things that if your box walked by, it would actually require you explaining why you're looking at what you're looking. Well, James, look, when, here's the fucking thing, guys. When, <laughs> when James fucking texts you something... You have to deal with the fact that you you are kind of texting with a psychopath. You mean the fact not in the traditional psychopathic sense, but just like you're dealing with a crazy person when you when you're texting James. So, but, and every now and again, you take a walk into crazy town. So, so the, if he sends you a picture, it could be of any thousands of reasons, and it's sort of your job to Sherlock Holmes why the fuck he sent it. That's that's put it this way. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's just. Description, I gotta say. That, just put it this way, there's a chance that if you open up an image of whatever James sends you around your boss, there's a good chance you won't have a job after you open it. Uh, that is true. Well, I sent Ryan <laughs> two pictures of meat. Just to make that sound as creepy as I, it can. Are we talking about and your meat or ground beef? I mean, what well, exactly? We are talking about ground this was, beef. This was grocery store meat. Because yeah. uh, I think it was ground beef, you, if I remember. Right? So... The reason why I did that is because Ryan and I had a conversation the other day. So just look at this ratio. That's that's all I want you to look at is the ratio. And then this ratio as well. Now, Ryan and oh, I were, we're talking, talking about like the, the 80, 20. Yeah, but what I cut found shit. at the store, and I haven't seen this in quite a while, is there was the 93% beef and you know 7% fat. And then there was another one that was seventy three percent beef, and the rest was you know the twenty seven percent was fat. Now the reason why Ooh. this kind of comes up in my brain, and I'm bringing it up here, is it makes me happy to see that there are still the higher fat content on ground beef. Reason being flavor. And making it be tender. It's like Kobe beef. That's well, why everybody loves Kobe beef. That's the reason that, because it's that you and I like it. I, I I have a feeling that we can thank the, um, like the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The keto fucking okay. diet people I for, for bringing that shit back. Um, well, 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 I kind of back, I was done with diets back when, what was it, the Malibu body or beach well, well, diet or some shit? Well, ketogenic diet is really good for people on um, who are diabetic. Yeah. Because it reduces carbs. Um, well, it's like no carbs. It's basically like high fat and protein yeah, pretty and much. greens. Yeah. But, well, I mean, for me, this came out of Harris Ranch. Most of us Californians know where Harris Ranch is. It's the really stinky part on the five. Um, but what I was really thinking, though, is it's good to see that Americans are changing back to not being so scared of higher fat meat because that's a lot of flavor and Brian and I were talking about this a while back about what was a meat eater the TV show is what's yeah. bringing up by the way ladies and gentlemen if you hear that 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 grinding noise that's just my teeth unfortunately something's wrong with my studio and I just got here so hopefully I'll be able to figure out what the hell it is because it's driving me fucking bad I wasn't supposed to be here today anyways um, <laughs> we'll do it after the show when it doesn't matter yeah. don't worry about it folks <laughs> so but the guy at Meat Eaters, he actually goes out and kills his own animals and breaks them down and then does like one or two dishes with whatever he's killed. Like the scene from Fried Green uh, Tomatoes? Kind well, of, but he also does a it in field. Show, but he's a, he's a big fan of showing, you know, like, like oh, here's what we're doing with this. Here's how much meat I'm going to pack a freezer with, yeah. you know, for X oh, amount so of he time. Actually, and, he actually breaks it down? Oh, yeah. He, he's a very good guy at explaining. Oh, and then he badass. also, um, when he's out hunting, because there's a lot of videos out there with him, uh, most of the show is him out hunting. You'll also see him basically yeah, live like, off the land by killing a certain animal. But or, he actually breaks down the animal? 
Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, he'll field dress it and pack it out of there and freeze it. But yeah. the way he see like every I want to say like tenth episode or so, he does like a cooking show. Yeah. Like a cooking special where he actually goes through and says, "Hey, this is this cut of meat is this, this cut of meat is that." Yeah, you know, this animal is good for this, and some hunters don't like this, but here's this dope way of cooking it. Yeah, and one of the times he was, he actually um, was kind of preparing uh, like more of a ground beef style one, and he's like, "Well, this is a a really lean, lean piece of meat, so I'm using extra fat." in there to help yeah you because if you're talking about no. like a deer who spends its entire day walking and running you're talking about a really lean animal so you have to add fat to it because it'd just be you wouldn't believe how how you know tasteless it is without the fat yeah yeah so i came across that in the store today i'm like i i'm in shock that i was able to find that more of a ratio i yeah that's but, pretty yeah. cool if so i found that below 80 percent make burgers with that shit oh exactly so what do you guys think of uh, netflix canceling luke cage and iron fist i um, i mean i uh, there's so many of those on netflix man yeah. i mean people bitch about how many movies fucking marvel does i mean there's 15 shows on on uh, uh netflix so here my my take was like i i, wa- I didn't watch all of I watched episodes of uh, all the seasons, but I didn't really watch the whole thing through. It didn't really excite me. I was excited at first, and then let's be honest, I never thought these are characters that could really carry their own show to begin with, because they're not... I it, To me, they're nothing special. I mean, I like both yeah. characters, but I just... Well, they were racing towards the uh, the Defender series as quickly as possible. They did yeah, one they really season were. of uh, them <clears throat> and Jessica Jones and just jumped right into it. So that was kind of my... Uh, because my, they knew that was the big sell, you know? Because that was kind of my, my my wonder. Wow, that's really loud there. I, I, I wonder if that's what they're going to do. You know, they cancel those two to jump into the Defenders. But I don't know. I just wasn't impressed. I mean, realistically... By the way, again, sorry about the noise. Uh, realistically, I just don't know if they're going to bring them back because I wasn't really impressed. I was... Yeah, you know, I mean, the I, only ones that I've really enjoyed has been Punisher and Daredevil. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. And, I mean, in the more ancillary characters around Defenders, um, I would have to say I actually enjoyed Iron Fist over Luke Cage. And, I mean, I did kind of like it. Yeah. I'm Luke sorry. Cage. I just, the, the, the funniest thing ever just popped up. How do you spell canceled? Just popped up on my, uh, my Google search. Yeah, it actually says, how do you spell canceled? Canceled. I'm sorry. That's like the, the, it's the weirdest thing I think I've seen on Google today. Uh, huh. Was how do you spell canceled? Um, yeah. I, I, also, the other thing Netflix is running into <coughs> is Disney starting their own streaming service, which is probably going to cost 10 bucks a month. So it's like Hulu and... And you know Disney Prime wants and Netflix. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's going to get even yeah. worse now that Disney's buying Fox. You know, I mean, granted they're getting the X Men, but there's also a lot of content. So sooner or later, you know, I, I don't know, because I'm actually kind of pissed at Disney just not putting their shit on everything. I think that would be better. I don't really care about it. it unless, well, I mean, wait, damn, unless, Disney has been <clears throat> has been doing this for freaking ever. You know what I mean? They've well, they've they, put movies in their in their vault for you know fifteen years before but what re-releasing doing, the new special edition. So, but what Disney's doing though is they're gonna they're they're putting much their own streaming service, which means they're gonna end up removing all their content as soon as the contracts run out. You're not right, gonna find, but that's my point though is that they've they've made a business off of being as exclusive as possible and and sort of drip feeding people. It's like the fucking diamond industry. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I think personally, the, the only way I would ever buy it, and this is my opinion, if they have access to the entire back catalog, like, they won't. you know, Songs of the South, the Vault series, a bunch of stuff they just never show. I mean, they won't. Like, hell, even give me the old Donald Duck cartoons, that, you know, from the, the 40s, Dude, 50s, yeah, that's and what 60s. I'm talking about, yeah. right? Like the shit I had to find on uh, YouTube that's quasi quantity. You mean quality. the one yeah, that if you, if I swear, Donald I, Duck and the Nazi? If they one. open up the fucking vault, I'm in, man. Well, I actually have, I've got, I forgot what they're called. I think it's the vault series. It came in like a. That's gonna sound my phone. The hell? They, they, they come in like a steel box, and it actually has a lot of the Disney War cartoons, and that came out 15 plus years ago far as having the donald duck and the nazi stuff but i just yeah want- i mean i want all the old da- uh 
Donald Duck um, uh, instructional videos where he teaches you very poorly how to play uh, billiards. Um, I don't know if you guys goofy? remember that one or the no Goofy did the exercise videos oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the the other instructional videos. The one I'm talking about with Daffy Duck, I remember seeing in in school. It was probably in like the fucking fifth grade. Um, they played this video. Um, it was Donald Duck. There was this guy narrating it, like the same one that was doing the the Goofy ones. But this guy was literally explaining the math of billiards. Like, straight up, here's how to work the diamond system in billiards. You know, yeah. and it was Donald Duck. I have I have a feeling this episode's going to drive everybody nuts. With the fan? Yeah. yeah. Um, I really want Ludwig, uh, Ludwig von Drake. I want all his stuff. Do you know who he is? I have no idea. He's the professor in the Walt Disney cartoons. He was first introduced on September twenty fourth, uh, twenty fourth, nineteen sixty one. Oh yes, I do like uh, wait. L- 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 not Bunker. the one that they modeled off of, like uh, um, Peter Lorre. Um, he's a uh, he's a what? He's so basically he's a bald duck, gray hair, and he's really smart. And um, I don't know. And whether, really short. I what's short? I really don't know. Oh shit. Oh, so oh, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Warner Brothers shit. Never mind. Ludwig von Drake comes from Vienna, Austria, has a fascination with knowledge since his youth, has been trying to obtain as many diplomas in science as possible, blah 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 blah. But he was in a lot of like the wonderful world of color episodes, some of the kids stuff. Um because I literally want back catalogs to everything. I my biggest problem with some of the <coughs> the Disney the Disney cartoons now, especially when it's the Mickey and, and their, their traditional characters. I really dislike their animation style as an animation nut. I just, I'm not a big fan of that particular style CG. Like, I don't know. You'll have to watch it. I don't like it. Yeah. I, well, I, I, I really doubt I'm the uh, market demographic for, for the new shit they're doing. I mean, I'm a nostalgic freak, so that's the only reason I watch all the old stuff. But uh, fuck, it was the other week I just bought uh, the old 20,000 Leaps with uh, Kirk Douglas. I liked that movie as a kid, and that movie drags as an adult. But fuck I, you, that movie's fucking dope. It's all performance, man. James fucking Madsen is just, just killing it, that whole movie. And then fucking Peter Lorre, the aforementioned Peter Lorre. That movie's dope? Really? I mean, should I go look Hell to see... Hell yeah, that movie's dope. Should it, No, just the word dope. Should I go look and see if the Living Color's back on the air? What the hell, man? <laughs> Next thing you think you're going to say, dude, is that guy's fly. So I'm over 30. What the fuck do you want from me? I'm not going to start fucking saying whatever the fuck kids are saying nowadays. I, I couldn't tell you what they're saying nowadays. Too um, old to change my slang. I just want I just want all the Disney stuff back. I even want their controversial stuff. Because that's the only way I'm going to even remotely spend money on this. Because at this point, I own two copies of every fucking Disney thing they've released except for the Marvel stuff. I mean, hell, I purchased <laughs> at least... One, two. I bet I purchased at least two or three box sets of uh, of uh, Star Wars at, at this point in my life. Yeah, really. Do um, they do they have a uh, sort of a release date for their for their stream stores? Uh, not that I've seen, but I also haven't been look, uh, looking. If you give me a second, God, that sound is driving me nuts. This is going to be the episode with the lowest views. <laughs> Well, they actually have to view part of it before they can quit. So it does get some some views. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything. I actually did it. Let's see. Oh, Disney's betting big on the 2019 uh, streaming service. So probably. God, when would I would do it? My guess is sometime towards the summer. Because why would they release? Why would they have a streaming service in the beginning of the year when school's still in? I mean, this is a guess. Well, though. I mean, it, it would it would make sense if they if they did like their their whole catalog and just made it available for streaming, and you have to sort of keep the monthly subscription. It, I, I I think they probably just did the math and realized that, like we can just net billions of dollars every year. Oh yeah. I mean, fuck! How many people like Disney, man? It's insane. Yeah. Well. I really don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm of multiple thoughts on this and it just probably just because, you know, I don't subscribe to cable. I have Netflix. I have Hulu. I mean, yeah, everybody does. I, I don't I mean, that's, want that's another the only way anymore. 
Because eventually I'm just going to pay for cable because it's the same fucking price. <clears throat> and I'll get, you know, that's the only issue is it's a cost thing for me. Yeah. I mean, I kind of finally got a little adventurous and paid for, started the 30 day trial of uh, Amazon. I have to think about it for a second. I don't know if I'd ever want to go to Hulu because I don't really like the way Hulu sets things up. I don't like their interface. Oh, by the way, make sure in that 30 days on Amazon Prime, if you don't cancel it, it automatically. Oh, I know. Yeah. Because that happened to me. And I'm, I think I'm going to keep it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on there that Netflix doesn't have. And uh, I mean, there's still things on Netflix I'm interested in. I just, you know, I wanted more options because, I mean, they're, it's not like they're limiting their, their um, Netflix. It's not like they're limiting what they actually put out on the streaming. It's just, I don't know. I wanted something different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the one. <laughs> the one thing the, the the one thing I'm really interested in is Apple is the the one in the streaming service race that's kind of the unknown because a they're a, uh, what are they a trillion dollar company now and they promised to bet big on entertainment. I recently saw something in the news saying they're gonna release a lot of the stuff for free for people have their like Apple TV stuff. So Apple right now is the one I'm looking to see what happens. Are they going to be I'm sorry, I was away from my Are of, they going to be putting it through like the iTunes account? I that I don't know. I know they said something about original content which is which right now everybody's trying to go for. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I mean, the best thing about iTunes like far as renting movies is they have like a 99 cent list and sometimes True. you catch some movies that you've never seen, so I've done that. I don't even remember my iTunes account or password. I think I think I think we're all becoming a bit too entertained. Well, how are they supposed to? How how else are they supposed to pacify the masses? Well, it used to be through you know hard work and ingenuity and sense of community and <laughs> LSD. <laughs> well, you know, but I, I I was I don't know. I, I was thinking about this earlier thing and the. See, I, I think you know, this... like back in the day when we used to be good at stuff, it was because everyone was kind of sort of sort of focused on on getting you know, better. See, I would say this was part of the conversation on getting we had. better. You know, what I, mean? I would say oh, this is part of the conversation like... we were having last week about you know something's toxic with current culture. Well, no, I don't. I don't necessarily think that because I mean I'm not definitely not one of those old people that all of a sudden thinks that, that everything these kids are doing is fucking bullshit. I mean you um, are in your thirties. But but, th but those old Yeah, people no, but were, I'm saying specifically those... we're we're too entertained. That's my point. Where there there's there's no kind of focus on um <clears throat> on anything that's 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 sort of worth pursuing anymore. You know, every everything is so fractal. I mean, the biggest business is basically entertainment. That's that's like our main export. I'm usually doing two but, things at once when I'm watching television. But so what I, I would say is this is nothing new to uh, cultured society. Um, the Romans had you know the gladiator pits. They had well, that's, orgies. That's, they that's, had that, that, they had a lot of things. Let's to, turn it to something in the last century. I mean, that's not like that. Because I'm thinking, why not? I'm thinking. Well, if you think about it, like the 1930s, when I think when the radio really started coming out, you had radio dramas, and then when it came in the radio dramas up until like the 50s, when TV started coming around, so you had a couple options. But one, and then you had movies. So I think this. Well, I'm putting well, it look, out here, there as, here's here's what I think. Here's what I think happened. Okay. I think that we were told for the last couple of generations that we were the greatest country on the planet, and everyone basically thought that the generation before us spiked the football and we were done, game over, we win. Then we stopped caring, we kicked our feet up, and we started just basically paying attention to pop culture. I think that's always been there to some degree. I mean, hell, Kilroy was here was the very first meme, and that was in World War II. Yeah, well, that's, oh, come on. I mean, really? I'm, I'm I'm talking about literally everybody having their their attention so fractal at any given point because there's four different screens in front of them. You know. Yeah, but I, I do. I know people, and I think maybe it's an age thing, but I know people who like like me. Like I'll be watching TV and I'll be working at the same time. You know, so I think I agree with maybe to entertain, but I, maybe at this point it's. 
the type of entertainment. There's so much visual entertainment. I mean, like I listen to podcasts, maybe enough people aren't reading, I, you know, and I, I meant reading long format, not, you know, like the news, like I read. Hmm. I, I, you mean like books? <clears throat> yeah, well, well, books or novels, like Rolling Stone stories, what are at least twelve pages? Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's a type of entertainment. Um, th- yeah, but what I just want to point out is the fact that this is nothing new to uh, master culture, you know, societies. It's not like, but a lot, but, but a lot of that you had to go out to community though. This is the first time where you can be in your room and your underwear in your parents' basement and never fucking leave it. That's a good point. So yeah. I guess in that sense, it would be the antisocial behavior. It's encouraging. Yeah. That's why I think there was something, I think there's a bunch of little things in, in huh. modern culture that are toxic to, to some degree. I wasn't pointing the finger at one thing, but I think it comes down to, you know, kind of my pastor says is I think it comes well, down I guess, to community. it's the same, it's the same people. You know what I mean? It's, it, there's nothing different. Um, you know, everyone, you know, looks at, or I, not everyone, a blanket statement, but a lot, I've heard a lot of people talk about like, oh, but these kids today are a bunch of, you know, weak little pussies and things like that. And it's like, all right, like you guys never had pussies in the forties. No, like, but come that's on. true. I, mean, I, I would say. The generation behind me are a bunch of pussies. The benefit about the kids, the kids now is the fact that. <clears throat> I think they could handle the information. I think they grew up in a world where they're having so much information and data thrown at them that they're able to handle it better than the generations before them. You know, everybody, all of the generations before them just learned to adapt. I mean, it, take a look. Oh, well, yeah. No, like for, for sure. But but I, I was just thinking in a, in a world standpoint, like the reason that that you know, nobody can get together to, you know, do something as simple as vote for a president. You know, I'm not even talking about who they vote for. I'm just saying that most people stay home. Yeah. I, you I know, like, it, it's because I they're, absentee ballot. I love absentee ballots. It gives so me, I t- do it at home. That's what I do. I li- I prefer that actually. It gives me time to, to really consider things. I eat prunes and a bunch of other shit and then go to the bathroom and vote. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to indict the two of you in, in saying you didn't vote. I was no, just no, saying liar. that. that <laughs> well, see, I save your that, lives. You know, back in the day, it was it was it was literally like people would go out and they would, you know, like vote for their city councilman and things like that. And it, I, and it, you know, their how their community was was evolving was sort of important. I think and that's people different. didn't have so much fucking time on their hands that they, you know, protest vegan freaking restaurants or something. I actually I'd think do that. I think that's a different indication. I think that's the. I think that's really kind of indicating how uh, how little hope people have in their politicians. When you have a percentage of the people that just never vote, I think that's that's people thinking that, like for example, in California, Gavin Newsom's running for governor. He hasn't actually said anything. He doesn't have a uh, a statement why they should elect him. He's really not running at all, and he's going to win by de facto. And I think that's why a lot of people are going. Well, what's the point? Which, well, I think he did a lot of stuff as lieutenant governor that people liked, and so they're just like, yeah, get that guy in. Yeah, but he's not – he hasn't actually really said anything. I mean, granted, he said some stuff, but John Cox, who's the Republican guy, has statements. He's out there. He's, he has a bunch of stuff. Gavin Newsom hasn't done anything. So I, I think – Well, Gavin Newsom's <clears throat> already popular. Yeah, but if you're not even going to try to run – I mean, he's pretty much just at home drinking, you know, drinking wine with his best friend's wife. Well, he doesn't he doesn't need to do smear campaigns. He can drop his name out there a few times, remind no. people that he's running and win. No, no. What, what I'm saying people is like him. what I'm saying, if you're not even trying and you're going to win, uh, that brings a lot of people thinking, you know, hey, why should Jackass. why should I try? And I think there's a point there when when if you don't think your vote's going to count, now how do you fix that? I, I, think- I don't know. I, I think it, it really depends. There's there's a lot of different types of ads that'll hit a lot of different types of people. Um, me- and I think a lot of people are sick to death of the of, of basically just fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Well, no, I, I don't I don't disagree. But let me put it this way. When somebody doesn't try and they still win. For me, then it, then my point is, why should I try if this guy's going to win and if my vote and all my friends' votes don't count? And I think that's I think there's a lot of things. I think this is another indication well, of what's wrong with society. Okay, hold for on. The last One so of those years. things is is a strategy for politics. The other is the exact reason why nobody votes is because of that exact thought. Hmm. Yes, because in, in reality, it, so let me put it this way: in the state of California, voting Republican for governor really is a waste of time. It doesn't do anything. 
It's just like voting Democrat in Texas. It doesn't really do anything. Well, so, that's that's not necessarily true. I mean, there's a lot of people on the left that are sick to death of the liberal. There's a lot of people on the right that are sick to death of the conservatives. If you can get in there and actually speak to some issues, people will listen to you. I think that's what people are kind of dying for nowadays is like, hey, can we just get back to people talking about like like what's going to be good for, for the average American? See, this is what has me – this is why I'm irritated at Gavin Newsom. I mean I'm not saying who I'm going to vote for one way or another, but I, I, I'd like to – I wish he would at least try. Riding on your loyals, lo, laurels and your past glories, it kind of pisses me off. I mean I may or may not like John Cox, but at least he says something. Not saying anything and still winning kind of fucking pisses me off. I don't like that. I want to hear politicians, even if I disagree with them, I want to hear them say something. Well, you know, you brought up a good point. The, the fact well, that he's – hold on, shut the hell up. Um, anything. The fact that anything. he is being so uh, – Quiet? No, I, unzealous about his position. You know, like there's a lukewarm type – attitude is what i would take it as like what makes you think that if he's not gonna actually try to get out there and 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 put effort into his election what makes me think he's even gonna put effort in actually doing what he's supposed to be doing when he gets elected but on the hand if you know well, you're okay win, why like try? i said people are remembering shit. what he was like as a lieutenant governor he didn't do much as a lieutenant governor i, I think he did a lot that people liked as a lieutenant governor I we'll have to pay attention more. I don't remember him doing anything. This is like being lieutenant governor. is kind of like being the vice president. You're just waiting for the guy in front to keel over. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. With that. I mean, I would just say there's it, nothing wrong with that. I mean, it just kind of pisses me off that the fact these politicians aren't aren't running, <coughs> aren't really going anywhere, aren't really doing anything. And I think that's another sign showing the toxicity of modern culture when you have you have politicians that don't try and you don't have any. Politicians, let's see, let me repeat, let me say this better. You don't have any politicians in power actually trying to talk down the level of rhetoric. Rhetoric. Granted, we have the Tangerine Tornado, which ups the rhetoric, but you don't have any of the, the, the major Democrats or major Republicans in the Senate or Congress going, okay, we need to calm down here. You know, this dude's going to be out in office a couple of years. Let's, you know, I, I think that's I think that's part of it. Because you don't have like the hippies in the 60s that were pretty much anti violent I'm, I'm gonna... Um, I wish that everybody would, everybody who doesn't vote goes out there and votes for a third party candidate. Fuck yeah. Now, the reason being, even if that person doesn't win, it almost doesn't even matter. I mean, it's, it's gotta be one guy. It's gotta be enough to, to, it's basically gotta be enough to get a third party on the, on the, the, the ballot officially and get them into the debates. <laughs> You know, if, if we can get a third party in the debates, all of a sudden everyone's worried about this this third party. You know, I, nobody worries about a third party now because they're not even in the presidential. You know, uh, nobody I would cares. Be, I would be totally down for it. Actually, Bernie was really close to being in there if if there wasn't some funny stuff done with the politics on the Democratic National Committee. Well, office. but he was running as a Democrat, though. He wasn't running as an independent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, he, he should have been running as a socialist. Gary Johnson was the other is. one that was. No, nobody wants to run as a socialist. Socialism is dumb. Uh, he would have. He would have actually gotten. He's because he, he doesn't. He say he's the only socialist uh, politician in the United States. Well, there's one guy. No, he said, well for one, he said he's a democratic socialist, which was kind of a different thing. And even even parts of that are are sometimes a little yeah. wonky. But that's open the, for debate. The, the, the guy but, you were uh, talking about, he shot himself. You don't in run the foot. as a socialist, just a flat out no, socialist. That's um, what the, Nazis are. The guy I was going to bring up is, and Ryan and I talked quite a bit about him during the election and after the election is Gary Johnson. I mean, he was your third party candidate, but when he went up against Trump and Hillary at all, the media didn't even really give him any type of name drop recognition because, or even did because, anything because they were more focused on the freak show of Hillary and, and Trump. Yeah, but the yeah, other yeah. thing is, Ryan but actually was, he had the most grassroots, uh, the successful grassroots thing that I can I, remember. But, but, I, think did, but I think but, Ryan's right though, is the fact that he wasn't enough of a factor. I guarantee if you, if you, you jump him up to 30, you know, 30 plus percent, then he'll be somebody to reckon with. Cause you have the democratic, you know, the nominee, the Republican nominee, put a third party, in there that's actually in the running they'll have no choice well the last um i would say the most televised 
third party candidate that I can remember, but he did such a shitty job about going about it was Ross Perot. And he was the one that I remember had his own had, went out and spent a lot of his own money to get airtime, to get commercials put out, to get his name out there. But since him, I really can't think of a third party candidate that even had a remote chance. It's basically for the past tw- over 20 years, it's basically we've turned it into a two party system when it's not. Okay, part of Ross Perot's issues was his freaking pointer. What, what was this? And I can hear the second from Mexico. Eagles don't flock. You have to find them one at a time. Uh, there are but two things worth living for to do what is worth even. Uh, that's not wrong. War has rules. Mud wrestling has rules. Political has no rules. The dude was a walking bad greeting card. Well, he, it wasn't the fact that he was just a bad greeting card. He just. <laughs> <laughs> he never I mean there was a lot wrong with him and I'm not just putting him down I mean there was literally a lot wrong with him but, when he ran yeah the, the only issue though is Ryan I think, were you old enough to remember him running and, really. and having his commercials and so if I was I didn't give a fuck about politics well Ross I really Pro, don't know I'm really talking out of my ass so take that with a grain of salt I think Ross Pro's biggest problem was the time I think so many people at this point are fed up with Republicans and Democrats Maybe there's the chance that we'll actually get a third party who actually really cares. Well, let's go back to what we're saying of the overload of um, information. Information. And the fact that when I went and actually decided to look into Gary Johnson, what his viewpoints were, what his what his opinions were of the political issues of this time. Uh, dude, I literally had to do a really in-depth search just to find anything of substance about the guy yeah well, because it wasn't being publicized and, and you know what and that's Here, here's my point about the uh the, the the belief of voting is you're saying you know why vote for somebody who's who's the incumbent who's just obviously gonna win because it's california Gav- uh, gavin Newsom, um gary johnson one is a democrat in a republican state of new mexico yeah, that was that was the only just one he by, really just wanted. Just by actually talking about issues that people wanted. Yeah, and, and uh, honestly, if I really put it out to just pick a candidate, he would be the one that I would have actually have liked to go for. But my issues were his voting record and some of his extreme views on um, medicinal drugs. That was where my issues, my big issues were with him. But the only thing that really decided where where I was actually going to place my vote was the fact of whether or not he had a chance. And he literally was not given a chance. See, I think what's going to end up happening, at which this, is sad. I think what's going to end up having happen at this point in time is just people just going to have to take a leap and vote for the third party, which I think what this is the reason why Clinton won, won because everybody wanted somebody else with Perot. So I... I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's any way solving this. But you know, I think maybe too in, too much entertainment. And I don't know. See, the, see, I don't necessarily think it's the entertainment. I just think it's a lot about less community. Not knowing well, your I think, I think I it's the door. a bit of both. You know what I mean? Look, I I I, I, I was raised on television and movies, and I'm gonna you know probably watch a dozen movies this week. You know, but it doesn't necessarily. Just because I have access to all these things doesn't mean I should, you know, fucking mainline them end to end. True. Um, um, well, a lot of people do. Yeah. Anyway, a lot of people really do. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and, and there's the there's the thing. I mean, people get all up in the conspiracy theories about fucking people in the ten trails and oh, they're they're spraying stuff to subdue the masses. Why do they need to do Agent that when Orange. fucking Amazon Prime's doing it already? Yeah, but sure. see the problem. I Why think- would they need to do that when Netflix already nailed it? But here's here's my question. 10, 20, 30 years ago when we were younger, you know, granted we'd watch a lot of TV, but there's usually most of us went to church on Sunday or had other things that involved people. I'm so busy during the week, I almost never leave my house on the weekends because I'm fucking relaxing. Right. So I, I think that's another part of it is I just think 
we're just so busy, you know. And if you're talking about like like kids today, you know, mom gets off work, they're taking the soccer practice, you know, then choir practice, then you know, then uh, underwater basket weaving practice. You know, I just think there's so much things. I just think we're burning dude, it, it starves out. Dude, do not talk about aqua basket weaving in a negative tone no, ever I, again. <laughs> I just think what's happening, I, I just think we're too busy, whether it's watching television. I'm going to call the same rule for primal screaming. I don't want to hear any shit talk about primal screaming, guys. <laughs> and you guys, can't ye- you guys can't yell about the Wilhelm scream. Are you kidding? I, I count the times. I, I can't I can't <laughs> wait to, to, to hear if I, I mean, I, my face lights up if I hear a Wilhelm scream. I don't know. I, I just think something's <laughs> happening, but I did find... I'm loving kind of the new podcasts coming out that are actually story driven. Yeah, I haven't and, had a chance to sit down with that yet. And instead of like, I found one that's a Marvel one about Wolverine <laughs> in a small town in Alaska. I recently, actually today, ran into another one called Wolf Thirty Nine or something like that. Um, Did they have insurance? It's it's about landing these these this. It's in the future, and they land as like a station on Mars, and they're colonizing Mars, and it's the stuff that goes wrong with it. And I love the fact they're getting back to like the radio dramas, which is what I love. And this is serialized. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Even the modern day versions, you know, the multiple actors and things like that. And um, you know, so I, I was um, so do you? I like- do like Audible because I I don't read at home because I have a fucking television. But um, I'll do like Audible, like on the way to uh, on the way home and on the way to work and stuff. I love Audible. And uh, a few weeks back or a couple months back or whatever, I was listening to. Um, uh, a full cast production, straight up radio play style of uh, American God by Neil Gaiman. Hmm. It was fucking terrific. Was it abridged? No. Really? No, it was actually extended. If anything, the the the, the whole preamble was basically him saying that you know they approached him to do sort of the the definitive edition, and he was able to add stuff that he had taken out previously and mix a few things around, and That's so it was the version that. He, He'd like the most because I have a a full production, <clears throat> excuse me, sound effects, multiple actors of Lord of the Rings, but it's it's abridged, but it's absolutely oh, yeah. amazing. I listen to it at least once a year. Yeah, that might be something interesting to uh, to check out. <laughs> if I can, find well, anyway, guys, I've got to actually, uh, I've got to, I've got a hard out here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bail on you. Got a hard out. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I wasn't gonna go. That's, with that's that. Hollywood speak for I got to get the fuck out of here. That's what she said. So uh, we'll talk to you well, later. on that note. Bye. <laughs> later. All right, you fellas have a good night. Yes. No. So, hmm, so the question is, should we make this a shorter episode? Yeah, or I think we just make it a shorter episode. So ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Mr. VD himself, Ryan Preston, as always, thank you for listening. <laughs>